Hi, everybody. It's Dilly Briggs from the Dilly News Rock Show. And tonight we have a special guest. We have a hot new upcoming artist, Miss JL, who I hear is all the rage right now, has some new music out right now. We're going to talk about her new tracks that she just dropped because she just had an album drop on Friday the 13th. And we are going to get to be able to play some of those tracks for you. So good evening, JL. How are you doing? Good. How's everybody out there? Having a good, having a good night. Oh, and we're excited to talk to you tonight. I'm really excited that you're able to join us. We had a little technical difficulty, so I'm glad that we're able to pull this off after all. Now, you have a brand new LP that just dropped on November 13th, Friday the 13th, and this one is called My Father's Daughter. And this has five awesome tracks on it. I love this. Now, and this is your first album, is that correct? Yeah, this is my very first EP. Very, very nice. Very nice. And that's a big deal when an artist is able to put out an, an EP out there, you know, and get it out there. And you've got some amazing songs on it. It's already got a lot of, you know, got a lot of uh, positivity already on it. Like I said, I've already heard a lot about you. You know, a lot of people are saying you got this amazing voice. So I've been listening a lot to it, you know, and I really do like, you know, the, all the songs on it. I love the way you, you know, you sing. I love the tone of your voice. And so, you know, I was really happy that um, I was, I was recommended you know, to be able to talk to you and to bring this information out there for you to help get that out. Now, um, tell me about this, about this EP now. What was, or actually before we go into the EP, give me a little bit of information about you. Can you give us some background information on you and like what got you started on this path? Because I know you moved from Denver, Colorado here to LA to pursue this career. And so far, I mean, you've, you've, you've been, you know, seeing some success. So can you give us some background information about you and tell us like, you know, where you've come from? Of course. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me today. I'm super excited to talk to you. Um, but yeah, I moved uh, to LA about two years ago uh, to go to the Los Angeles College of Music. And I started as a vocal major there and I ended up switching over to songwriting and finding um, just this huge love of just the creation of music and uh, the creative process and all of that. But I grew up in Denver and yeah, I was really blessed to um, be raised by uh, a very uh, musical family who just loved listening to lots of different kinds of music. And music was always, you know, a huge unifying factor in our family. Like we would all go to concerts together and my mom was always, you know, we would do dance parties in the kitchen. So music was always a big part of my life. And, you know, when I was going through hard times and difficulties in my childhood, it ended up being a saving grace for me in a lot of ways too. I started taking voice lessons when I was nine and it just was something really um, solid and um, exciting for me to focus on when other things in my life weren't quite as stable. And I think from there, I just kept growing as a musician and as a singer and I started writing my own music and it just kind of continued to build. And next thing you know, I'm here in LA. Very nice. Very nice. I mean, I mean, that's awesome to find that out, though, too, with the information about you, because not every I mean, everybody has a different story, you know, to tell. And, you know, again, I've heard a lot about you already in this short time. So I'm very happy, you know, that I was introduced to your music and I'm very happy to be able to bring that out here for other people. Um, now, tell us the process of this. You know, it, it's a new LP that you have out. But how long did it take you to to work on it and get all that out? Because you've only been here for two years. And so you've already made a lot of the connections and stuff to be able to do this. Sure. Yeah. Well, it was actually very much an in-house kind of thing. You know, quarantine started in March and I had kind of started to doing a lot of, um, I just turned 21 the October before. And so I started playing, you know, at the Viper Room, I started playing with uh, uh, Gritty and Pink at the... Um, at the satellite every every Tuesday at the beginning of the month. And I had all of these new exciting opportunities that were going on. But then when quarantine happened and live music kind of shut down, all of that went away. And for me, you know, I'm a I'm a person who really loves to be productive and likes to keep busy and likes to keep moving forward. And for me, I needed to find a way to continue to stay busy and to have something to look forward to, to just keep myself trucking along, you know. And the EP kind of became that, you know, I'm lucky enough to have close friends that I quarantined with. Uh, they live five minutes down the road. And so we kind of quarantined together. And one of them happened to be the very, very talented writer and producer, Drew Lewis. 
and we ended up making the EP just the two of us together in his oh. in his home studio. So I would just come over like three or four days a week and we started, uh, I, I want to say we started maybe in June and the EP was finished. We were finished recording it in September. So I would just come over like a couple days a week. I would bring him, bring him a song that I'd written and we would flesh it out together. And it's great because he's a really close friend of mine. So it didn't feel like work. You know, we were just, you know, we're, we're really passionate about what we do and we were just making music together as friends and it was really fun. And so it was a good stress relief, I think, from like the turmoil that we've all been experiencing uh, given the circumstances as well. So we just kind of put the EP together and um, then my roommate, actually Odin Cheesebro, he mixed it and then we sent it away to be mastered and honestly that was it like it, there wasn't a huge production there weren't like a huge group of people it was just it was just the three of us well and kind of right now people kind of have to work a little different anyways on how to be able to do stuff like this because i was going to ask that process for you but you gave us that explanation because you know it is hard right now to be able to get together and to do music and things like that so yeah i mean it is very fortunate that you were able to be quarantined like you said with people who talented people who you were able to work with and you know and to get this taken care of and to get you know get this together for you so because again i mean the songs are pretty amazing i really did like what i hear um, and, and the way you delivered a lot of the songs, some of them have like that dark sense to it, but, and it, and a little bit of that dark tone, you know, and then you also have a little bit opposite type of, you know, um, a little bit more of just that dance type of music, that feel good music at the same time. Cause I have to admit every time I was listening to it, I found myself dancing. I'm just starting to dance around as I'm listening to it. And, you know, a lot of times I'll put the music on in the background if I'm doing something else so I can continue to hear it. You know, but I could still see, I still found myself dancing to the beat. So you have definitely got something that's very catchy. It's something that sticks with you, you know, the lyrics as well. Even when you touch on something dark, you can kind of see the story in the lyrics as well. And now you do have a video out for one of these, for one of these tracks for uh, My Father's Daughter, for the actual, uh, like the self-titled song from the album or for the EP itself. Um, tell us about the video about this because it's a bride, like a bride running away and like, it looks like a wedding dress, like you're running through the forest. And what is the story for that? Yeah, so um, I shot the video um, and it was directed by the lovely Kelsey Adams and she's incredible. Um, and basically I came to her and I said, I want to do a video that basically is a visual representation of the cycle of abuse. And if you were to make a visual representation of that, what would that look like? And I talked about maybe possibly an idea of the two ideas that I gave her, as I said, maybe some sort of like running through the woods, trying to escape, you know, your past or some manifestation of that. And then I said, I wanted to see parallels between the relationship between a dad and a daughter and the relationship between a lover and, um, and a woman. And I wanted those to kind of parallel each other to kind of show that cycle of abuse. And she took it and ran with it and created this whole storyline where I'm essentially running from uh, my lover or um, somebody who I'm with, I'm running from him through the woods and along a path alongside the woods, there's a dad and a daughter walking home from school and you kind of get to see our stories intermingle. And um, it was, it was really awesome to shoot. Everybody that we worked with was really great. And I just had a really great time and I think it turned out amazingly. And that's honestly all thanks to Kelsey. Oh yeah, the visual was great. I love the visual. And again, you it told the story. So, I mean, and you can see, because again, just the visual of, of kind of looks like the wedding dress. So, you know, she's running away from somebody who's supposed to be significant in her mm -hmm. life, but she's running from that person just from the representation of the dress, even though it's not a full blown wedding dress, sure. you know, you can kind of, you know, it gave the representation and just, you know, seeing you run through the woods and all that. And then when you come across the, the father and daughter, you know, you're right. It does show where the paths cross you know, in the songs and in the lyrics. So yeah, I thought it was a fantastic job. I really did like that. It was very um, visually pleasing. And again, it, it just went really well with the lyrics because it told the story, even without the lyrics, you were able to visually see that story as well. 
So I think it conveyed it really well. I think you did a, uh, the, well, everybody that worked on it did a great job, you know, and just you running through the woods in a giant dress where you're having to hold it up and run. I don't know how you did that through all the woods and you're oh, jumping yeah. over this and jumping over that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was, that was very fun. Kelsey actually, yeah. So my dress, I still have it. I ended up having to put it in a trash bag because it was just covered in dirt and like stuff. But, um, but I still have it. It's like up in my closet, just like, you know, bagged up. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it was wearing that all day long was definitely interesting. But yeah, she, she had me crawling up through you know, trees and like on the ground and, you know, there's a puddle scene and I'm all in the puddle and yeah, so it was, but it was really fun. I had a good time with it. You know, I kept tripping cause that dress is gigantic and she was like, no, no, it's great. Keep tripping, which is, you know, the only thing I'm good at cause I'm just accident. <laughs> so it, it honestly worked out great for me. I, w I felt like a star, um, but, <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was super fun to shoot. My dress actually, it broke halfway through the day oh my so god if you notice um fun fact if you watch the video um there are only a few shots where you actually see the back of the dress because the rest of the day we had to find a way to shoot around it so that you don't so that the camera doesn't see because we ended up having to run the like ride aid or something to get safety pins to safety pin oh them. my goodness so wow this is like in between takes they're having to like re-safety pin my dress but, you know, <laughs> there's like times where I'm like I like kind of like run in an interesting direction or I kind of like um spin in an interesting way and it's because we were trying to like get it so that you wouldn't see the back of the dress so fun fact <laughs> look at that fun fact Got a little trivia there going you know so you can always throw that up later on but I get it when she's like saying, keep tripping, because again, you're running from somebody and it is a big, the dress is like full at the bottom. And so you're having to carry like all this material on top of running through the forest with, you know, your hands full on top of that. So it's not like you got your hands to really, you know, grab onto stuff and things like that. So I get it because it's like that natural feel, you know, so I'm surprised you didn't let just rip and hook onto something and just take off in your slip, <laughs> you know, just to show you're still running. But since we are talking about that particular song right now, the video is great, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure to go check out the video. It's like I said, you know, it's very, um, it, it tells the story, you know, and you can definitely get into it. It's beautiful scenery at the same time as telling a story about trying to break that cycle of abuse. It's still got beauty in the background, you know, because there's always beauty with that torture at the same time. But I'd like to go ahead and let's go ahead and play that song since we talked so much about it. And so now this one is My Father's Daughter. Uh, it is a self-titled, you know, a uh, song off of the album, which is My Father's Daughter as well. And again, it dropped November 13th. So we're going to go ahead and play that for everyone right now so we can check it out. Stop. 
Nice, very nice. Once again, if you're just tuning in to the Dylan News Rock Show here on Rocker's Edge Radio, we are speaking with JL, and that is the new track on my father's daughter, my father's daughter from the new LP that she just dropped November 13th, self-titled My Father's Daughter. Now that's the first track off of this. You have five tracks on it. Um, now the next song that we have, well, actually, what song would you like us to feature? Oh, next. Um Let's let's do um, let's do a little bit of a switch up. Let's do my type next. Okay, okay. Now for my type, give us. I I like this song because again, it's a little bit of that abusive cycle. Like you're kind of addicted to a little bit of that negativity. You kind of just can't help it, but it's there because like, there's always that yin and that yang. So can you like give us the process of of writing what this song is a bit about and like the process of it before we play it? Sure. So my type. Um, I kind of was just, I, I get easily frustrated with dating and, um, obviously, you know, my past is, um, you know, fraught with, uh, challenges having to do with, um, you know, obviously my relationship with my father and that tends to come out in my relationships later on in life, which, you know, isn't really something, you know, I, I expected to have to deal with. Um, but I think, you know, there's always, uh, there's always, you know, I'm a hopeless romantic and I always believe that it's going to work out, you know, and I, and I feel like I continue to attract, you know, that sort of like toxic or negative energy into my life. But, you know, I, I hold out hope that eventually I'm going to end up in a really healthy and happy relationship. So, you know, I think that this song plays really uh, well between that. Um, it has a lot of playful energy and a lot of like cynicism, but at the same time, there's like a hopefulness to it, you know, like, you know, it's kind of like I'm, my type is, you know, a bad guy, but I'm going to laugh it off, you know, and it's not a serious thing. I'm going to move on from this. And I think I really tried to capture like a lot of different energies in the song where it's, um, it's hopeful, but at the same time, it's, you know, it's just kind of funny. You know, I think a lot of women are in that spot where, you know, they're, they're keep, you know, I have conversations with my friends all the time where, you know, I wish I could date a nice guy or I wish I could date somebody who didn't ghost me, you know, or doesn't talk about himself on every date we go on. And I think this song for me was just about putting all of those frustrations into one song. So this song isn't even about like one guy in particular. It was just, you know, the last five dates I've been on have been horrible. And here's this song. <laughs> So for the last five dates, just so you know, you are an awesome influence <laughs> on a really cool song. <laughs> because, I mean, honestly, in ge the generalization of it is a lot of women and, you know, people just, you know, anybody just dating, you know, not necessarily women, but just anybody dating can can identify with this song, you know? Oh. So, yeah. Yeah, it was, I, I, I like, I like the song. I liked what it stood for. And I like, you know, like how you said, you know, it's just, you know, it's something that you just have to deal with and, you know, and, and just, you know, deal with it. That's just life. But yeah, I thought it was a great, I thought it was a great compilation. I loved the lyrics. I loved everything about it. And yeah, it was a little different than the rest because it had a little bit more of that poppy sound, but it still wasn't, um, quite poppy in lyrics, you know, type of thing, you know, so it was just something like, but that's every day that people deal with people really do deal with that stuff. So because it's a reality and it's something people relate to, I think that, you know, it's, it's a really big, I think it'll be a big hit off of this, 
LP. So ladies and gentlemen, so again, if you're just tuning in, we are speaking with JL, just JL, and she'll give us all her platforms later where you can find her, but we are featuring some of her new music from her new drop, album drop on November 13th. And this was the title of My Father's Daughter. Now that's the subtitle of the album. And this is one of the songs on it called My Type. He keeps leaving me on red mm -hmm. and he keeps trying to get me to listen to his SoundCloud. But I think you might be the one. <laughs> I always fall for the white lies. Can't help but I adore the wrong guy. Once again, if you are just tuning in, we are speaking with JL here on the Daily News Rock Show on Rocker's Edge Radio. The audios will go up first. And of course, the visuals, as we are recording this visually, will go up later as well. Um, but I really like that song. I mean, again, I was listening to all of that song, but that is one that just really stuck in my head. Because again, you can't help but want to get up and dance to that and move to that. It's got that poppy sound. It's got that dance vibe that you just want to move. But at the same time, the lyrics are very much that 
everyday reality that everybody, you know, anybody dating, you know, I have, you know, I have single friends out there that are also dating and stuff and, you know, they're, they go through all of this and, you know, so to hear a song like that, that it's definitely going to be, I think this is going to be like one of the most popular songs off of it because you're going to have so many people being able to relate to it, you know, and especially right now in the pandemic, because dating scene is a little different and harder than normal, you know, so a lot of it is through the social media stuff too. So but I think it's definitely going to be a hit. I love it. I love it. I thought it was great. I love the sound of it. And I love the words and the lyrics and all that. So, um, so yeah, so that was my type. We just heard, and we also heard my father's daughter. Now we've got three more songs also to play now. Um, now some of the process of the other one. Now the one, um, you have a beautiful a ballad that we're going to play for everyone as well. I'll take care of you. Tell us a little bit about this and the process of that. I don't want to give anything away on that one. Sure. So all of these songs, obviously, I think the sound of all of them is very different. I think um, the it's very eclectic sonically, but they all have a very, I think the subject matter is what really ties the EP together. And this song is um, kind of along a similar vein, whereas, you know, My Father's Daughter, you kind of have that, we touch on the cycle of abuse. And then in my type, we kind of have that more fun. Well, I just like guys that are, you know, that are bad to me, you know, but in a fun way, I guess. <laughs> and then <laughs> I'll um, take care of you is definitely the more sobering um, kind of result of all of that kind of um, dating material. And it kind of came about from a really toxic relationship I was in a few years ago that kind of stuck with me. And I think it was really the first time I realized, you know, how the cycle of abuse manifested in my life. I think it was the first time that I really felt that happen. And um, I actually wrote this song for a class that I was in for one of my songwriting classes where we had to write a song about our first heartbreak from the other person's expect uh, from the other person's perspective, okay. and um, so this song, well, obviously mine was a little complicated because um, my ex boyfriend was a narcissist, <laughs> so that kind of you know makes things a little more difficult to write about. But it actually ended up being a really great way for me to process those really hard emotions, um, you know, feeling uh, kind of going through that all again, but from his perspective while the relationship was happening. And so, you know, in the relationship, you know, he was very much saying, you know, I'm going to take care of you and I really care about you and everything I say, even if it's rude, even if it's hurtful, I just mean it, you know, I just want the best for you, you know, and, uh, you know, that ended up doing a lot more, um, harm than help, but, uh, I think I came out of it stronger and, I think this is one of the best songs I've ever written it's, and it's something I'm so proud of just because it was so it was so difficult for me to write and difficult to record too but I'm really happy that it exists and I feel like I was able to work through a lot just in the creative process. Well this song um, this ballad that you wrote I mean uh, it's a little bit of a different take now that I have your explanation on on the writing process of it again I asked the process of it so that people, you know, fans that are listening, get an idea of it as well. Because sometimes if you just hear it and then now what you say to it, um, it does give a little bit more in-depth uh, um, meaning to it than when I first heard it. But even when I first heard it, it already hit me like, like really hard. It was just like, wow, that's like profoundly deep in a lot of ways, you know, the lyrics and the writing and everything. And I thought it was, it was beautifully done, but you could, but you could, yeah, you, uh, exactly. You can still see the cycle where everything still blends into the EP. Like all your songs still have a certain saying, a certain meaning, a certain thing, even if it's just for yourself, but that creative process to get out and get away. And like you said, to be in a healthier situation, which I'm glad you were able to get out of a bad situation. But the process that you're you're putting into your your writing is absolutely beautiful, and I thought it was something that really touched me. And I think that's something that a lot of people will be able to understand. And I think it's very uh, it's very moving. It's definitely very moving. Thank you so much. So Girl, why'd 
hard and naive Big boot and paid with a soft center Sitting pretty in my passenger seat Singing along to the same song on repeat I'll be keeping you warm all winter Chip on your shoulder, something to prove Fell for me like you had nothing to lose Any other guy would leave you back in blue But I'm gonna take care of you I'm older, trust and know better Stay close and hide in my sweater So many things you don't understand Take the wheel and I'll teach ya I know what you need, let me lead ya You're my baby, let me be your man Chip on your shoulder, something to prove Love is a game and I never lose Any other guy will leave you black and blue But I'm gonna take care absolutely beautiful and honestly in that song I think the delivery of your voice really shows the range that you can hit your voice is absolutely beautiful I love it and you know and again that I think that's also another reason why it's so touching because your voice sounds so sincere and it really pulls you in in that ballad so I really do love that you know so once again that was I'll take care of you now we do have uh, two more songs that we're going to feature, but before we feature the next few songs, is there anything that you want to like um, say to anybody out there? Maybe like give a little shout out to somebody or perhaps maybe like, you know, give some word of advice to other people, you know, other artists that are looking to do what you're doing as you are starting to see some success. And actually in, in two years, honestly, that's kind of like a short time frame for someone to see success, you know, coming out from another state to, you know, to, and, and just starting you know, and so is there something that you, maybe advice that you can give somebody else? I think just be so open to new opportunities and new people and just, you know, always just be very kind to everybody that you meet and really take an interest in other people because if you take another, an interest in other people, then they take an interest in you. So just, I think being a really genuine person and I think um, being really dedicated and having a good work ethic uh, I think are the things that I try to cultivate most in my career. And um, yeah, just as far as uh, writing and singing and everything musical, just the more you do of it, the better you get. And the more people you do it with uh, as well, because uh, the more music you make with different people, you get different perspectives, you learn new things. I think that I've grown so much as a person from going to the Los Angeles College of Music and then also from just everybody that I've met in the LA music scene. You know, I've learned just an incredible amount about what it means to be an artist, a musician, a writer from so many different people. And I think when you combine all of that um, information, 
you, um, you can really start uh, to put the pieces together and make something really beautiful. And I hope that's what I've done with this EP. And I hope that's what um, it inspires other people who have a love for music to do as well. Oh, and I think you do. I think you're very inspirational. Again, again, I mean, in a short time, you've seen success and the music is beautiful. You know, I mean, you got you have music that's just like it sticks in your head and makes you want to get up and dance to such a contrast of this ballad that almost makes you want to cry. You know, I mean, because you, you kind of tug at heartstrings, you know, with your voice. And again, the delivery of it, it really makes that impact. So, I, I mean, I love that one myself. Absolutely. So, yeah. Make sure to check out her music. Make sure to check her out on all different platforms. We, we still have a few more songs to feature. Now, this next song, um, we're going to close out with one that she chose, Lucky You. So the next song before that, this one is called, hold on, what's this one? Um, Dead in the Water. Now, uh, what is the process for, for this song, for Dead in the Water? Well, I wrote Dead in the Water right at the beginning of quarantine. And I think everybody was really finding solace in entertainment and everything on Netflix. I personally was watching a lot of, you know, fun uh, CW drama shows like um, Dynasty and R uh, Riverdale and all that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, it's all very focused on, you know, betrayal and who's stabbing each other in the back and who's doing what, you know, and then coupled with, you know, I'm dealing with my own anxiety and my own stress and everybody is, you know, at the beginning of this pandemic and there's a lot of uncertainty. And so this song kind of uh, was a marriage of my own inner anxiety and stress and tension um, with kind of a storyline from, you know, one of those uh, drama shows that I was binge watching at the time. And I ended up creating the song called Dead in the Water, which um, the story is, uh, is made up, but the feelings were very real when I was writing it. So it's just kind of a combination of like that emotion with, um, I guess, that make believe. And uh, that's what I think is so special about Dead in the Water. All right, and we're about to play. Oh, yes. Shout out. Uh, Matt Fuller from Puddle of Mud did the guitar on it. And he oh, did nice. an amazing job. And I just want to shout out him real quick because it was so nice of him to do that. Um, I sent over the track and I said, is there anything you could do with this? And 20 minutes later, I had this amazing guitar um, track in my inbox. And so I... I'm really, really excited about that. So shout out to Matt Fuller for being an amazing guitarist and an even better friend. Nice. Very nice. Again, like you said, collaboration, network, working with as many people as you can. You never know what you'll end up with. And this is a really awesome song. So, all right, we're going to play it here for you on Rocker's Edge Radio on the Daily News Rock Show. This is JL and this is her track, Dead in the Water. Change your curse around my neck It's been about two days since I have slept Oh, you broke a vow the day that you left The promise is something that should be kept We open the wound, allow it to fester I feel like a fool, some modern day jester Go on and find that somebody better go get her You go get her Threw out all your shit and I changed the lock Soldier the ring and the clothes you buy Fuck around with me and the tables turn Don't forget the prayers that you just burn When my fuck comes in, I'll let you drown The river runs, you'll be floating down Dead in the water Dead in the water Should've known that a baby sink or swim Should've loved me harder when you could back then Now you're dead in the water Dead in the water Say that you miss me, beg me to trust you Words that mean nothing after what I've been through Fingers up pruned me, face turned in blue Lies so easily, I know it isn't true Do I all your shit and I change the locks Soldier down the ring and the clothes you buy Fuck around with me and the tables turn Don't forget the prayers that you just burn When I
ghost, your memory haunts me Coming back to life every time that you're lonely Awesome. Now with this one, um, this song here, Dead in the Water, like you said, this was one that was not necessarily personalized as far as in your emotional, personal feelings, like a lot of the other ones, but it had a great song to it. It had great lyrics and had a great, it still had a great delivery and it still had a great message, you know? So I, I love that. That's something I really loved. So that was awesome. So again, you're listening to JL on the Daily News Rock Show. This is going to go up on Rocker's Edge Radio. And some of the visual might also still go up on Chaotic Radio as well, as we are on both stations. Now, is there like, now, before we, the last song that we're going to play is something that we're going to close out with so that everybody can still hear and one more song from you, you know, and this is one that you chose. So it's something that um, it's your pick. But before we get into that and talk about that last song, tell everybody like where they can find your information, like exactly, you know, kind of give a little bit more specific on what platforms that people can find you on. And like, if you have any type of upcoming show, whether it's a live stream or something like that, you know, let us know about that so we can follow you. Sure. So um, the best places to reach me are um, my Facebook page, um, official JL, and then my Instagram, which is at music by JL. Um, I also have um, my music, uh, my father's daughter, the EP is up on all platforms, Spotify, Tidal, Apple Music, and uh, the video for my father's daughter is on YouTube as well. Nice. Very nice. Okay, now, so tell us a little bit about this last song, Lucky You, because this is something a little opposite <laughs> of, of the lyrics that we've been listening to, a bit opposite of this, and it's kind of fun at the same time, you know, so tell us, tell us about this one. Yeah, so obviously the EP covers a lot of inner turmoil and, you know, emotional darkness, and I really wanted to end it, you know, I didn't want the entire EP to just be, uh, I didn't want to end it um, on a cynical note, you know, I wanted to end it um, in an uplifting way, because I think for me, this EP was very much um, a time capsule of my, of who I am right now in this moment, and I, you know, I'm a very hopeful person, and I always hope for the best, and I think I wanted to end the EP on that note, where, you know, even though I've gone through all of this, and I've had these issues in um, my family, and my personal life, um, I still have, you know, I'm a really strong person and I really, you know, I have a lot of self-love and, uh, I've really fought to be, you know, a warrior and somebody who comes out on top in a lot of difficult situations. And I think lucky you is my way of, in a really fun way, kind of communicating that, um, perseverance and that, um, and that faith in myself through all of this. And so I wanted to end the EP in this show on that note where, you know, if you're going through hard times or if you're dealing with some emotional issues, you know, you can, uh, inside yourself there, you've got to find that, that grit and that, and that power, um, uh, and that confidence in yourself. And that's what I want people to take from this song most of all. And you know what, it, it does portray that. It does. It does portray that that inner strength of, you know what, this is me. 
and this is what you have to deal with. Kind of. <laughs> so the title of the song is called Lucky You. So we are going to end on the last song, Lucky You, so that people, again, can hear that last song, something a little different from the, uh, the rest. Like you said, something upbeat. So something really great. Again, you're listening to JL here on the Dilly News Rock Show on Rocker's Edge Radio. And don't forget to follow her on all of her platforms. Do you have any shows or live streams or anything like that that's going to be maybe coming up in the future that you want to plug? Um, right now, I'm just, I'm honestly working on new music, working on uh, uh, promotion for this EP. Um, so no live stream shows as of yet. But if I, uh, but if anything comes up, I'll announce it on my platform. So follow me there. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. And don't forget, come back for more. So now we're going to end up with Lucky You. Don't need no diamond rings, velvet strings, fancy things. Don't want to be a beauty queen on magazines, the silver screen. Lay me down in the kitchen, I with my shirt cut low and tie blue jeans. I can still be a baby doll, even if I'm nobody. was lucky you by jl make sure to follow her on all platforms she has her new ep that dropped november 13th so that's just out make sure to check her out follow her everywhere on her facebook her instagram you know make sure to check out anytime she's got new music coming up and thank you so much jl for taking the time to speak with us this was fantastic i love your music it's something that i think is going to be really popular i think i think you're gonna we're gonna see a lot of you so, like I said, I was already hearing the rave about you and that, you know, your music is, you know, really hot and has got a lot of positive feedback already. So thank you so much for taking your time and speaking with us here on the Daily News Rock Show and letting more people know about you and your music and what you have, you know, to offer for everyone. This was fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It was so lovely to meet you. All right. And don't forget, everyone, 
come back for more.